All right, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming. My name is Miles Stanton. Uh, these are my teammates, Deacon Trask, Andrew Rodrigue, Patrick Miller, and Max Tomlin. Uh, we are Team Food Waste. Welcome to our Capstone 2 final presentation. I'm going to review the agenda for this presentation. I hope this makes it easier to follow along. Uh, first, I'm going to give an introduction to the topic at hand and summarize what we'll discuss uh, throughout the presentation. Deacon is going to go over the background, which will include project goals and details, as well as acknowledgments. Andrew is going to provide background on agri-energy and chickadee compost, and he will also compare and contrast the two companies. Uh, Patrick is going to give us a price and environmental comparison of the two options. Uh, Max is then going to summarize everything we discussed and open up the floor for questions. So Team Food Waste has been tasked with making Maine Maritime Academy a more environmentally friendly community by putting our food scraps to better use. Currently, Maine Maritime has a has a contract with Pine Tree, a waste management service. Uh, this contract dictates that food waste and non-food waste currently goes to uh, Penobscot Energy Recovery Company, which most of you know by PERC. Uh, this is in Orrington, Maine. Uh, the food waste gets burned in their waste to energy boiler. Uh, this is not the most environmentally friendly option, nor is it very efficient for PERC. Um, their food waste, our food waste, uh, lowers the efficiency of the boilers at PERC based off of the high water content. Uh, both MMA and PERC would be better off with their food waste going somewhere else. Uh, with the goal of lessening our community's environmental impact in mind, we had two options to choose from. Uh, the first being an anaerobic digestion plant in Exeter, Maine called AgriEnergy. The second option was an organic waste composting facility in Blue Hill, Maine called Chickadee Compost. If you'll direct your attention to the, um, to the red dot on the screen, I'll show you where those are. So uh, it's a little too shaky. I'll take the mic with me. For reference, uh, this is about where Castine, Maine is. This is the Blue Hill, Maine area, which is where Chickadee Compost is. Uh, right up here is the Bangor area, which is where Perk is located. And way up here is Exeter, Maine, about an hour and a half away, which is where AgriEnergy is located. Excuse me. Uh, some of the major considerations we made during our research on what company would be the best choice included greenhouse gas reductions, uh, emissions during transportation, accessibility for Sodexo, uh, the impact on MMA's community, as well as the financial imposition on MMA's administration. The team met with leaders from AgriEnergy, Chickadee Compost, and Sodexo to gather the information we needed to make an educated recommendation on what path MMA should take. The team rotated between five positions, the project manager, the project engineer, the field engineer, the controller, and the office manager. Every two weeks, uh, each team member takes on a new position, and each position has its own responsibilities. The project manager schedules team meetings and sends the team, meet the team a meeting agenda uh, so everybody can be properly prepared. Uh, the project manager also prepares and delivers a project update presentation each rotation. The project engineer completes a project update report. The field engineer keeps a time log and a request for information log. The controller oversees the project schedule and the office manager creates meeting minutes for every meeting. All job positions work towards meeting the goals of the project. And the rotation through these jobs helps expose us to distinct roles and allowed us to practice each set of responsibilities. Now that I have summarized our project and introduced you to some important topics that we will be discussing in this presentation, I would like to introduce you to my teammate, Deacon Trask. He will be giving everybody more background on our project. Deacon? 
Thank you, Miles. Um, so in order to choose the best alternative for MMA's food waste, there are a few main objectives we had to complete. And we needed to work with Sodexo to gather information on the logistics of separating food waste from other garbage and the storage issues that could arise. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, as well as the implementation and training of the new program for Sodexo. Uh, we also had to get quotes from AgriEnergy and Chickadee Compost to see what the, they would charge to pick up the food waste up. Um, we had to figure out what requirements each company had for items not allowed in the food waste. Um, another task is to figure out how much food waste is currently affecting uh, per boiler efficiency and emissions. And in the end, we needed to determine whether agri or chickadee would be the best option for MMA. Uh, there are many smaller tasks throughout the project in order to make a decision as well. Um, we'd like to thank Professor Ferreira for setting up this project for us and helping us with anything we needed throughout the project. Uh, we also like to thank Sodexo manager Jimmy Mayard, uh, founder of Chickadee Compost, Kate Tompkins, and Director of Agri Energy, Greg Williams, as well as fellow student Levi, uh, Levi Murphy for taking the time to work with us and providing us the necessary information to complete the project. Um, in order to be successful, weekly team meetings were held to share ideas and information that we collected throughout the project. Uh, we also assigned tasks for each member to complete. Um, the major efforts completed by each team member where Andrew was the main contact with AgriEnergy and he was able to get a quote in their logistics. Uh, Patrick was the main contact for Chickadee and he secured a quote from them. Uh, Miles was a dedicated contact for Sodexo and worked with Jamie Mayer throughout the project, uh, collecting necessary information such as the food, uh, food waste quantity. Uh, Max con uh, contacted many MMA staff in order to collect the school's contract with Pine Tree who transports the school's trash to perk. Uh, I use the collected data and other references to complete an environmental impacts assessment to compare perk, agri, and chickadee. Uh, I'd like to welcome Andrew Rodriguez, who will be providing background information and a comparison between agri and chickadee. Andrew. Thank you for the introduction, Deacon. I'll be giving an overview of agri-energy and chickadee compost, and I'll be dis discussing the quotes uh, for each. Um, our PET Capstone 1 class last semester took a uh, field trip to agri-energy in Exeter, Maine. Um, their site is roughly 59 miles away from Maine Maritime Academy, which is around an hour and a half uh, drive. Uh, AgriEnergy is a food waste collection service that consists of two anaerobic digesters. Uh, the picture up there is the uh, two anaerobic digesters at their site. Uh, manure from 2,000 uh, dairy cows at Stonyvale Farm is combined with food waste uh, to be di digested and collected uh, methane gas, which is burned to generate electrical power. Uh, methane gas is created when microorganisms break down uh, biodegradable material in the absence of oxygen. Uh, AgriEnergy has two methane generators on site that burn this methane um, from the two anaerobic digesters. The material left after the anaerobic digestion pro process is called digested and it's rich in nutrition and can be used for fertilizer. Uh, the chart shows the price breakdown for Agra Energy. Uh, I was informed by Greg Williams that Agra Energy can indeed provide a service for eight totes uh, per week. Each tote can roughly hold 200 pounds of food scraps. Uh, when Sodexo collected their um, and weighed their one day post consumer waste, it was concluded that Sodexo produces, uh, produces roughly 1,300 pounds of food waste per week. Uh, so the price breakdown for these numbers assumes that six totes will be emptied per week. Uh, the weekly service cost is $160. Uh, additional $8 per tote emptied. A monthly tote fee of $3 per tote. 
and a monthly fuel surcharge fee of 10 to 15 percent on top. Uh, these costs added up, bring, uh, bringing the, t the monthly total to $963 and a yearly total of $11,556. Uh, next up, we have Chickadee Compost. Uh, Chickadee Compost is a composting facility in Blue Hill, Maine, founded by Kate Tompkin, uh, whom we worked with closely this semester. Blue Hill is 22 miles away from Maine Maritime Academy, which is uh, roughly a 30-minute uh, drive. Chickadee Compost gets their food scraps from local residents, businesses, and schools to create an organic compost. Uh, from the start of Chickadee Compost to 2022, they have composted 171,000 pounds of food scraps, crab waste, and spent grain from breweries. <clears throat> Chickadee has an efficient process that helps reduce methane emissions and reduce CO2 emissions while providing the local community with composted soil. Uh, Chickadee Compost can provide the same service as Agra Energy uh, for six totes being emptied per week. Uh, a round trip would cost only $82.50. Uh, the monthly total would be $330 for 1,300 pounds of waste being emptied per week, and which brings the year to uh, $4,290 a year. Uh, up next is Patrick Miller. He will be going over uh, the co uh, cost comparison and environmental impacts. Thank you, Andrew, for the introduction. My name is Patrick Miller, and I'm going to be talking about the price comparison between Agra Energy and Chickadee Compost, as well as the environmental impacts and the financial burden of this project was a major concern to our group throughout the duration of our research. We wanted to find the best food disposal option with the minimum financial impact for Maine Maritime Academy. Our team took the quotes provided by uh, Kate Tompkin and Greg Williams and extrapolated those quotes to find an overall yearly cost for each food waste disposal service. As we heard from Andrew, the annual cost of Agra Energy is, is $11,556 and the annual chickadee compost cost is $4,290. The comparison between these numbers show that there is a savings of $7,266 per year if the food waste is sent to Chickadee. This large cost difference is mostly due to the transportation cost. There is a 37 mile difference between Agra Energy and Chickadee Compost. Chickadee also excels due to the simplicity of composting and the lower overhead operation costs when being compared to an anaerobic digester. The choice to transfer the food waste from Perk to Chickadee will be an added cost to the school due to the existing pine tree contract uh, that MMA has for the regular trash removal. However, this will cause a positive overall environmental impact and help to create a more sustainable MMA campus. During our research, we compared all aspects of the environmental impacts of each food waste disposal option. We use Perk's environmental impacts as our baseline to help decide where, the where there was room for environment improvement and what options would be more eco-friendly. I'll summarize this table and help lay out the environmental impact comparison. All three disposal sites have negligible methane emissions. This is because Agra collects all methane emissions to produce and generate power. Uh, Chickadee is not a producer of methane and PERC is able to burn their food waste in a waste energy boiler and cause no methane production. Agra Energy is the only site that has a positive power output due to the food waste we would provide. PERC has a negative output, a negative power output from MMA's food waste due to the water content in the food, and Chickadee does not produce power. But Chickadee Compost has the least uh, transportation emissions due to the energy, or uh, due to the close proximity to Maine Maritime Academy with 110 pounds of CO2 per trip, and Agra Energy has the highest CO2 emissions with 360 pounds of CO2 per trip. Chickadee and Agra both have the best food waste byproduct, which is, um, which is organic fertilizer or compost, and PERC has a byproduct of ash. 
Our team has concluded that chickadee compost is the most environmentally sustainable choice and the least CO2 emissions and negligible methane production. Composting also helps to sequester CO2 using the soil and plants being grown in the high quality soil. Next, I'd like to introduce Max Tomlin to speak about the conclusion of our project. Thank you, Pat. Um, I'm gonna go over the conclusion and our recommendation for MMA. So to finish up our presentation, I'm gonna go over the goals. First, we had to work with Sodexo to gain a better understanding of the logistics that would go into separating the food waste in the kitchen and in the trash bins. Uh, second, we needed to contact and secure quotes from AgriEnergy and Chickadee Compost, which we did. Next, we need to gain access to MMA's current pine tree contract so we can understand how much it is currently costing MMA to dispose of their waste. Uh, next, we took a look at the environmental impact of reducing the waste going to PERC. Implementing this program will reduce the carbon emissions, um, as Pat explained previously. Um, the program will be a big step for MMA to continue to improve our environment. Finally, we need to determine which company will be the best for MMA in all aspects. Um, we, would all, we would like to thank again all of our contacts throughout this project for taking the time out of their busy schedules to help our group and get us the information we needed to complete this project. Without their help, they couldn't have gotten enough we couldn't have gotten enough information to make an accurate decision for what MMA should go with. Um, so the two deciding factors um, for choosing Chickadee or Agra was that Agra is a higher priced option. Um, their quote came back at, for a yearly price of around $11,000, and Chickadee came in at 42, around $4,200. That's over a $7,000 difference, so it would be uh, saving MMA money to go with Chickadee. Um, Agra is also around an hour and a half away from MMA, where Chickadee is 30 minutes away in Blue Hill. Uh, Having chickadee as an option will save on CO2 emissions from the travel of the trucks on the road. So chickadees, chickadee will cause the most methane and CO2 reduction out of all three company, all three options that we have. Um, they won't have, we won't have as much food waste burning in PERC, which will give PERC a better emissions rating as well. Um, so for our recommendation, we recommend that MMA implement, implements this food waste program in the following years. They should go with chickadee compost. After all our research and debating, we know that chickadee is the best option for MMA's food waste program. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll open up the floor to questions. Hello. All right, so uh, great presentation. Um, I did have a question about if this proposal was brought to Maine Maritime, and if so, like, what did they think about it, and what were their thoughts about adding an external class to the institution and the academy? Can you repeat the last part? I kind of cut out. Uh, what is the... It, all right, so if you... Was this proposal brought to Maine Maritime Academy? So it hasn't been brought to Maine Maritime Academy yet. Uh, we plan to, right after our final presentation is graded and our final paper is graded, send that in to um, president of the school and hopefully talk to Kate again when, when we're done and see what she thinks about it. And uh, after that, we'd like to bring it to the school. I also just have one more question. Um, so as you noticed with the uh, agri-energy and the chickadee composting, when they turn it back into fertilizer, um, where does that fertilizer go? Is that more industrial? Is that big farms, or is that sold to places like Lowe's, Home Depot, or small garden shops? Um, mainly for the fertilizer, that's going to go to bigger farms to be able to be used. They don't do more of the industrial side. Thank you. Chickadee also has bulk um, compost sales and smaller scale sales. So if somebody, a homeowner, for example, wanted to buy some compost, they can pick up a bucket of compost, or they can get bulk compost for their garden or farm. Awesome, thank you. 
I just had a quick question. Uh, what food waste materials can't be accepted at Chickadee Compost? So on on Chickadee Compost's website, uh, they do not want bones, cat and dog uh, poop, and uh, store bought flowers. Uh, some of the other obvious things are like plastic and glass. Um, what they can um, accept is obviously food scraps, uh, paper bags, uh, tea bags, and napkins, stuff like that. All right, thank you. Nice job, everyone. Um, my question is, did you put together um, a layout in the kitchen of where the compost bins would be and how the logistics would work for the folks working in the kitchen and in the dishwashing area? No, we did not put together a layout, but we did speak with Jamie Maynard, and she has um, specific places that she does want it in. Um, we did not hear back from Sodexo in time to be able to put together something for this presentation. But thank you for the question. And another question, where would the uh, big bins be stored? Uh, they plan on storing them outside on the loading dock uh, where there's already a couple other bins. Can you go back to your table that showed the different um, savings and whatnot? Right there. Uh, that yeah, one. That one right there. Yeah. Can you um, walk me through how you did the effect on megawatt output for PERC? Can you explain that a little bit more? Um, basically, they did a thermodynamic calculation for the amount of uh, water and the food waste. And I was able to f figure out how much that water had to heat up going through the boiler and basically use the energy that it took to do that as the energy reduction for PERC. And there's also an increase in uh, SO2 emissions as well. And for your transportation with the pounds of CO2, what unit is that? Is that per year? Is that per trip? That's is per trip. Per trip, per so 189.4 pounds of CO2 just in transporting the food waste? Yeah, that's per like round waste. trip. So either agri or chickadee would be one trip per week, I, I believe. And how many trips to perk per week? Uh, they do two, but that wouldn't change even if we did the go to uh, chickadee. So um, just so we're aware, this isn't going to like take anything out of what they're already sending to PERC as far as regular trash goes. Um, it is going to be an increase in price for MMA to be able to implement this program, but it'll be better for the environment if they do it. Could you tell me a little bit about the pine tree contract to explain why it wouldn't lower the price for them? Right now, they have a uh, set price, uh, a weekly price that they come and pick up. They're not just picking up at Sodexo. They have, I think, eight other locations around the school that they pick up um, garbage from. And that wouldn't change? And uh, the mess deck has three 10-yard dumpsters. And we actually calculated that food waste would be about 0.7 cubic yards per, what was it? I think it was per week, so 0.7 out of 10, you're probably just not going to reduce the amount of dumpsters we need either. Yeah, so those 10-yard dumpsters can hold about 6,000 pounds, and we would only be reducing 1,300 pounds of waste, and right now those dumpsters get filled to the brim by the time they're picked up. Uh, so only reducing 1,300 pounds isn't going to reduce the amount of dumpsters, and that's how we would actually save on the pine tree contract if we were able to renegotiate the contract to have less dumpsters picked up. We still could potentially renegotiate that contract to say that, hey, we're 
we're giving you 1,300 pounds less per week. That's gonna save you money on transportation. Maybe we can even try to reduce our waste as a whole and get that even lower. Uh, and that could potentially save the school some money, but the way it looks right now, it wouldn't be enough to cover the cost for chickadee compost. It in no way is gonna equal out or save the money. And I have just one final question. One of the things that you used um, for all of your calculations was 1,300 pounds of food waste per week. Did you take into consideration the four months out of the school year that students aren't here and how that might change? I think just we kind of went on a weekly basis, so that'd be during the school year. Uh, during the summer, when not really anyone's here, I don't know if the Mesec even has food waste. So I don't think, I think you'd basically have no cost through the summer. But the pine tree contract would stand, and so we would be paying them whether or not there's trash to pick up or not. Um, there isn't room for negotiation on the contract for that right now. Does anyone have any other questions? Hello. Hey guys, great presentation like normal. I have a question. It's a little, you know, speculative, hey, a little speculative in nature. Um, so previously we had a presentation about anaerobic digesters and MMA's been buying up property recently. So I'm kind of interested. Do you think there might be a collaboration next year about setting up an anaerobic digester in-house for MMA and then possibly during summer collecting some food waste from the town of Castine? What do you guys think about that? You know, that sounds like a great capstone project for next year. And <laughs> what's even crazier is that another capstone group made an anaerobic digester. So, Yeah, it's like Peanut butter and jelly, you guys would go together really good. Peanut butter and jelly, yep. <laughs> I liked your presentation. It was very informational. Um, my question for you is, did you ever consider maybe Perk should pay for this? Because they're really the only ones benefiting from it. From what I see, like they're losing, they don't have as much moisture content and they get more BTU content out of our trash. So maybe there'd be an incentive for them to pay for it or was that even a consideration? I think it'd be hard to say. You'd have to make do more calculations to figure that out. But basically, I think I figured out it was around a half megawatt hour they'd save per week. So you have to figure out how much that's worth to them and maybe they could reimburse us for that. And did you, I know you also mentioned that the water content diminishes the, the fuel quality, but also are there any environmental impacts of burning food waste? Obviously, uh, you get a little bit more emissions because it reduces the amount of power you can produce, but there's, they also said uh, they have increased SO2 emissions. I'm not sure what, at what level that is. Just was wondering. Thank you. And as far as like the price, um, if they're getting more megawatts and making more money, uh, maybe that's something we can bring to their attention when we try to renegotiate the contract um, once we um, kind of have an idea how much um, food waste we're not bringing to them. Yep, I think that would be maybe in a part two <laughs> for the next capstone. Anybody else? Thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs>